Hey, today we're going to go through identification ions kind of questions. I know that many of us find it very difficult and often we just give up. But it's amount to 7 to 8 marks, sometimes even 10. It's just so much marks that you can't give up, give it up, right? So I came up with two steps, alright? So watch the video and see if it helps you. If you like the video, remember to click like and don't forget to subscribe, alright? Today, I'm going to teach you identification of ions. Well, what exactly is identification of ions kind of questions? Now, I'm going to show it to you. It will look something like this, with lots of boxes. And your job is to solve the puzzle and write down the identity. And always, they will always end off with write a balanced chemical equation for any one of the reactions. And they amount to 7 marks. Sometimes they even amount all the way to 8. This is 7. I have one over here, also with boxes. All the identity add up to be 8 marks. Another 7 marks. And there's a lot of things too for you to read and to decipher. So, these are the typical identification of ions kind of question. Most of the time, we were taught to Hey, we should find the head first because the head will help us to find the rest. Now today I'm going to teach you a method to solve identification of ions, not by solving the head first, but we look out for the heart. What is the heart of this puzzle or the heart of this question? The heart is always the centerpiece, which is the solution. Step one, I look for the solution. Why do I look for the solution? Because through a solution, many a times, we can find out who is the cation and who is the anion. And my identification of ions will require me to get myself familiar with this paper called the Notes for Qualitative Analysis. Does this notes look familiar? Yes, you are right. This is exactly the same paper that you're given during your practical. But of course, during your written paper, this paper is not given and our job is to memorize them. Don't worry and do not fret because I actually came up with another video to help you better understand and memorize it in a very short time, okay? So do not fret. Now, first of all, let's look for the heart, which is solution. So next time when you see those kind of questions, always remember, look out for solution. Solution means that you have to look for the cation and the anion. So how do we solve for the cation? Like using this paper, you need to look for solution like sodium hydroxide and aqueous ammonia. If you forgot the formula for aqueous ammonia, please write it down. It's NH4OH. Now, after I find the solution, I came up with another step called this eight lines method. This eight lines will help you to solve for your unknown very quickly. So every time when you see a solution, I need you to bear in mind that you're supposed to look for the cations and the anions. With that, I will add two lines. Plus, any of the unknown, they will always you know, test for the cation, you will add something to it. So the something that you add will have another two lines and you will produce your product will have another four lines. Total, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And these eight lines will also help you to solve for the equation. So let me show you an example. Like I say, step one, when you look at the question, do not fret, let's look for the heart. Where is the heart? Well, it's the solution. Let's look for the solution. Stop, green solution. So when I look for T, T here says it's a green solution, I immediately think, hey, it's a solution. I can add two lines. Yes, you are right. So for T, I write down two lines. Now over at this part, they say here, add acidified aqueous silver nitrate. Silver nitrate acidified. Immediately go back to this portion of my QA notes. Let's see, silver nitrate. Ah, add nitrate acid and add aqueous silver nitrate. Immediately I know they are testing for chloride. And if there's a white PPT, it shows that there is chloride and there is a white PPT. Immediately I know this portion here, the two lines 
for my T, one of the unknown is none other than my chloride. So immediately I know here contain chloride because silver nitrate white PPT. So I know this portion here has a chloride. Since there's two unknown, one of them here must be chloride too. Because unless I have chloride, if not, I add silver nitrate, they won't be chloride at this part. Hey, so immediately I know one of the part of my T here is chloride. And over here, this portion, they add sodium hydroxide, green PPT. Immediately, I look for sodium hydroxide and I look for green PPT. And it's Fe2+. Immediately, I know what is my T. Fe2+. I solve my T right now. So, Fe2+. I have my T now. Now, what does the eight lines come in? They will help me to solve for the rest of the question. So right now, let's look down. T to V, T to V, eight lines method. I have two lines here plus add sodium hydroxide. Just now, as I mentioned, whatever that you add, you write two more lines. I add sodium hydroxide, sodium hydroxide to produce one, two, three, four, four lines. So I'm going to write down four lines. Over here says add sodium hydroxide and you will have a green PPT, green precipitate. You see this word precipitate, it also goes to show that this is a precipitation method. In precipitation method, it's an exchange of partner. So you will, Fe will no longer go with Cl, Fe go with OH now. And Na no longer go with OH, Na will choose to go with Cl now. So I will have Fe2 plus OH minus Na plus Cl minus. And I rewrite the equation to make sure that I have a balanced and beautiful equation. There you go, an equation is not complete until we balance it. OH here has two sets, I just need to make sure that I add a 2 in front here. I make 2 OH, NA become 2, I also make sure that I put a 2 in front, and I make this 2 NA as well. Next up, I need to make sure that I fit in my state symbol, because the state symbol is important. Well, why is that so? Let me finish the state symbol first. Now, coming back to here, FeCl2, they already say that this is a green solution, it's a solution. So if you have this table with you, Cl, all are soluble. So I should write aqueous here. This is also aqueous because OH, group 1, is Na, is also soluble. Soluble, the state is aqueous, Aq. This is OH, but this is iron. It doesn't fall in group 1, so it's insoluble, I put an S. And a Cl, Cl is here, O are soluble, I write an AQ again. So there you go, I have, I have written a full equation, and which one is my answer then? Can you realize that this is a green precipitate? Green precipitate means that it is a solid state, so this is my answer. So V actually is my FeOH bracket 2. There you go, I have one answer, two answer already. And, and I even wrote down one full complete equation. Wow, I got not only two marks, I even got then the marks for an equation. Now, how about let's try one more example. Let's go T to U. How do I solve T to U then? Same thing, eight lines. My T is one, two lines, so which is Fe2 plus Cl minus. But this time round, I add what? Every time you add, it's also two lines because that's how your compound is formed, which is your Ag plus NO3 minus will give you. Let's do an exchange in partner. Fe will go take our nitrate now, and silver will now go with Cl. And let's not forget the other four lines, and that's where you have Ag go with Cl. And Fe2 plus go with NO3 minus. Of course, all these are my working, and I rewrite the equation with a good balance of the numbers. There you go, I have right, written down a full equation. 
Not forgetting, an equation is incomplete until we balance it. Nitrate is two sets, I put another two here. Ag become two, I put another two here. Ag is two, Cl is two, I balance it. Right now, we're going to write down the same thing, state symbol. You notice that the state symbol is so vital in helping us solve the question. Now, how do I write it down then? Over here, iron chloride, chloride, aqueous. Nitrate, all nitrates are soluble, aqueous. Chloride, Ag is insoluble. Immediately, I write down S, all nitrate is soluble, aqueous. Now, then the next up, let's see who is my answer for my U. U over here is actually a white precipitate. And precipitate means that it's a solid state. And this is my answer, silver chloride, AgCl. Ta-da, there you go. So I found not only one answer, two answer, three answer, and last a balanced equation. One, two, three, four, five. Five marks in my pocket, okay? So after we find the solution, what is the next step then? Well, always look for the guesses. Why do I say that? Because the guesses are the easiest. From your identification of ions or the qualitative analysis notes, the tests of guess are all here. And most of the guess are very simple and we are all very familiar with it. Let me show you some examples. Example in this question, a colorless gas bubble into lime water. Lime water, immediately you will tell you, Lime water test or carbon dioxide. Even if I don't show you this paper, I'm sure all of you will know that, hey, I know this is CO2. Bingo. How about this one here? Colorless gas, burning splint, popping sound. Pop sound, hydrogen gas. I'm sure even before I gave you this while you're watching, you already know. I know the answer. This is hydrogen gas. Well done. Good for you. So, these are some of the examples. You can test for, look out for gases. Thirdly, they are what I call the special kind of reaction. So these are the chemical reaction with acid and metals. Now, when I talk about chemical reaction with acid, you will remember this chemical properties of acid. Acid react with metal to give you all these different kind of gases and a reaction that are, you need to get yourself familiar with this because many a time they will start with that example this question that we did just a while ago powdered metal r add acid form a gas so we immediately i know this must be a metal plus an acid to give you a salt this is the salt and this is must be hydrogen gas because metal react with metal, we add with an acid, will always produce hydrogen gas. Hydrogen gas. Next up, for this portion here, I saw that they also add acid. This part add acid. And this unknown substance B add an acid to give you carbon dioxide. So immediately I know this B, who is this B that will react with acid to give you carbon dioxide? Coming back to here. Acid react with metal carbonate to give you carbon dioxide. So I know immediately this B must be a metal carbonate because I have carbon dioxide here and I have an acid here. Acid, carbon dioxide, this must be metal carbonate. So my B must be a something carbonate. Now, last but not least, I've introduced to you this. How about metals? Many a times when metals are added, Usually, this is a displacement of metals kind of questions, okay? Where a metal is, um, a more reactive metal is added to displace a least reactive metals, all right? So with this in mind, I hope you will help you to have more confidence in solving identification of ions kind of questions. Thank you so much for watching the video. I know that it's really long and thank you for staying through. Um, you can actually repeat some of the parts so that you remind of yourself of the steps and practice and practice. As you practice more, you'll be more confident of solving this kind of question, okay? Remember, if you like the video, help me to click like, okay? And don't forget to subscribe.